Hello, hello everyone and welcome to our last video in the series about monetary policy. Today we're going to be talking about strengths and weaknesses of monetary policy and also just a little bit about what the RBA does when they do a dirty float to affect the exchange rate. So when we look at this in our study design, we are looking at the very last point here, the strengths and weaknesses of using monetary policy. Uh, hopefully in your own class time, if not, I'll make another video later on that you'll look at the point above, which is about monetary policy of the last two years. To put it in simple terms, over the last two years, it's gone down. That's all there is to it. It's gone down, just that way, to 0.25%. Um, but then you'll also have to look at how that's affected the goals of strong sustainable economic growth, full employment, as well as low inflation. So first up, we're gonna quickly talk about what a dirty float by the RBA is and how it affects the exchange rate. So there are two things they can do with this. So a clean floating exchange rate is a situation where they change the um, equilibrium determined by market forces um, in the absence of RBA interference. So basically this is where the exchange rates change just by natural things occurring in the market. So it might just be that interest rates change and then naturally the exchange rate changes because of the things that we talked about with the exchange rate transmission mechanism channel where when the, when the interest rates are dropped, uh, people withdraw their money from Australia there's more Australian dollars on the foreign exchange market and the Australian dollar depreciates. But then there's also a dirty floating exchange rate, which occurs when the foreign exchange market, um, when the RBA sets, becomes a net buyer and seller of Australian currency with the intention of lifting or depressing the exchange rate. So you might remember when we looked at the balance of payments um, in part of the financial account, there was a bit of the RBA's reserve assets uh, and basically it's where they stored their currency, gold, etc. And they can use this currency to buy and sell on the foreign exchange market if they want to conduct a dirty float, which means they can either flood the um, market with Australian dollars or buy a lot of Australian dollars to take them off the foreign exchange market to affect the value of the Australian dollar. So why would the RBA want to change the exchange rate? Well, maybe they want the exchange rate to go lower so we are more internationally competitive. That's one of the biggest things you're never really going to want it to appreciate. Um, but the RBA really wants a stable exchange rate. And so by doing that, they don't do it often. I don't know, I can't remember the last time they ever actually did a dirty float, but in this time, um, like that's why they do it. They want the exchange rate usually to be lower so that we can be more internationally competitive and therefore export a lot more. So now again, strengths of monetary policy. So the first strength of monetary policy is that the RBA is independent. They can make decisions free of political bias. So they don't have to worry about the government. Although the government does try and influence them, they are free to make the decisions about monetary policy on their own. And the implementation lag is relatively short. Most often you'll see they announce on a Tuesday that the cash rate will be dropped. It is dropped then. And hopefully by the next day, the banks have decided if they're going to pass on the interest rate cut or not. So that's almost instant. Within 24 hours, most of the time, interest rate cuts have been passed on to consumers. It can have a powerful influence over the behavior of consumers, investors, borrowers, and lenders. So a lot of people, um, they hear that interest rates are falling, they wanna borrow money to invest or spend. Um, for example, two years ago, we um, took a loan out against our mortgage because interest rates were so low and we got a pull because we we're just like, well, why not? It's the cheapest it's ever gonna be. We don't have to pay much interest back on it. And so that's a powerful influence on the behavior of consumers. Um, investors as well, like businesses to see it's a good time, well, it's not a good time to invest in businesses at the moment, but because the interest rates being so low, it could be a good time to borrow money if you had a great business idea. Um, and this can then affect borrowers and lenders. So it's relatively powerful at controlling aggregate demand during a boom. If you increase interest rates during a boom, people stop spending because suddenly they've got less cash flow. So these are all really, really major important strengths of monetary policy. Once again, like I said, budgetary policy with anything with strengths and weaknesses, you're going to expect a discuss or an evaluate question. So make sure you know a couple of these pretty well when talking about how monetary policy can impact aggregate demand. So strengths and weaknesses of it. So for our weaknesses, monetary policy is a blunt instrument and cannot target particular markets or sectors. What that means is that you can't specifically be like, all right, we want to change interest rates for businesses. It's not like that. It's just, if you change interest rates, you're changing them for everyone. So the cash rate falls, it's fallen for everyone. So it's blunt, it affects everyone the same, and therefore you can't target certain areas. And the impact lag can be up to two years. So often the full effects of interest rate changes or cash rate changes 
haven't aren't effect aren't um we only feel like a certain percentage of them the first year and then it's not until fully two years have passed till we get the full impact of the spending that's caused by changes in the cash rate so reasons for that can be because when people like when interest rates have dropped you kind of got to think about it it's like well I guess I could invest in a business or I could buy a house, but there's planning for that. Like it takes a while. It's not just instant. So it takes a little while for the effects and aggregate demand to come through. Also, the RBA doesn't have direct control over interest rates. They, although they set the cash rate and they do try and influence banks, they don't actually have the power to be like, hey, banks, lower your interest rate. Banks will do what they want. They're private businesses. They want profit. They're, they've quite a few times ignored the RBA and that has caused some issues where monetary policy hasn't been as effective as it could be. It's also less effective at stimulating aggregate demand during a downturn, quite apparent now. Interest rates are the lowest they've ever been, but we are in a pandemic and people do not want to spend because they're afraid that they won't be able to pay it back in future. So it's not totally effective when consumer confidence and business confidence are low. Monetary policy also becomes less effective as private sector indebtedness increases to high levels. Once again, quite apparent in Australia, high um, household indebtedness ratio, people are afraid to borrow more, which makes monetary policy less effective. And it cannot directly reduce inflationary pressures from the supply side of the economy. So um, some of the issues with that is like it doesn't really, um, it can't make cost of production cheaper for businesses because basically if you increase interest rates, cost of production goes up for businesses because they're paying more back on their loans. If you decrease interest rates, all you're really um, doing is although you might be um, decreasing their um, interest repayments, it's more trying to get them to invest and expand. So it's not directly going to impact that cost inflation side of things. And then, so lastly, if we had to just talk quickly about recent monetary policy, we have been decreasing interest rates on the cash rate to try and stimulate the economy. So it's at 0 0.025 at the moment, or 0.25 at the moment. Since uh, March, we had the two rate cuts. Um, and the purpose of that is to been trying to stimulate the economy. The banks passed on a portion of those two rate cuts, not the whole thing, um, which means they haven't been as effective as they could be. And then also because of the pandemic with coronavirus um, and unemployment rising to record high levels, they haven't been as effective as they could be. Um, and we can go into more detail later on about how the recent changes have affected each of the goals. But until then, and that's it for strengths and weaknesses, make sure you know a couple of them really well so you can talk about them and discuss or evaluate question. Uh, other than that, if you have any questions at all, send me an email on my email in the description below. Other than that, I hope you have an excellent day and I will see you next time to start the final topic of RSA2 aggregate supply side policies. Have a great day. I'll see you then. Bye.